back in 2001, uh, Lil' Kim, uh, she, she denied that her manager, Damian Butler, was uh, present or, or she was with him or he was around when she answered questions with federal investigators and then I guess later video and, and other people's witness statements not only showed that Damian Butler was the shooter of this incident that happened in 2001 outside of Hot 97, but Lil' Kim was right there and her limousine helped get these guys away. And I think it took them four years. This happened in 2001. 2001. And then in 2005 is when the whole case came. Like Bruin, yeah. Yeah. So by that time, they had a statement from Lil C's that put Damian Butler at the scene. And I don't know if, if, um, if his information is the only information that got Lil Kim convicted. But at the end of the day, um, Lil C's did provide some information. He provided some information. Now, I don't know about the Damian Butler side of it. The Little Kim side of it was like this, though. They had a slam dunk case on Little Kim. Whoever was her lawyer, whoever was her homeboys, whoever was her people, they supposed to told her take that deal and damn near made her take that deal. Ain't no way you should have went to trial, you know. So then once you went to trial, now they, they started subpoenaing people, whether yeah. it's your side or whether it's the uh, U.S. attorney side uh, or the district attorney side. And once they get to subpoena little P, little C's, he had to come to court. Now, once you come to court, now here's another thing. They get up there, they get on the stand, and they start talking. You know, me, I'm not gonna talk. Period. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm 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 gonna use my Fifth Amendment rights, or I'm I'm not gonna get up there and say nothing, even if you did subpoena me. If it's consequences to that, I'm gonna take those, Alex. You know what I mean? But I'm not finna get up there and say something. But what little C's didn't do, he didn't get up there. He was in a situation where either I'm gonna get up here and lie and now I'm gonna have a perjury case, or I'm gonna get up here and say what these people really already know. You know what I mean? Or he could plead the fifth. Isn't but, that but I'm finna option? say, I'm finna say. So he chose to tell. He chose to tell. But Lion wasn't gonna get him. Lion was gonna get him in jail. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that that his his only options was lying, or going to jail, or just. But he he shouldn't have said nothing. You know what I mean. You know, stand on it, homie. They give you ninety days, sixty days, eighty days for for not speaking. You know, let it be. You yeah. know, especially when you out in these streets and you you know you talking about some gunplay, you talking about some junior mafia, you talking about some gangster shit. That's how you handle that, man. Even if you get subpoenaed, get up there and don't have nothing to say, man. See, this is what I don't understand in, in these types of cases. If Lil C's decides, I don't want to answer any questions, the most he can do is six months. Right. It's not like they're going to give him five years. No doubt. So I don't understand why these people always feel compelled that they got to tell when they don't really have to. He hey, sit down for 30 days if you got to. Real shit. It's just a contempt. Real shit. Yeah. And, 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 and he chose to go this route by... Stating what his 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 ideology would I'm stating what they already know. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they did know everything by this time. You know what but I mean? But the jury don't know or the grand jury don't know or the judge right. doesn't know. Yeah, so they absolutely. need another outside person to say. So that's an excuse. Hey, y'all gotta stop saying I'm just telling what they already know. Well, the jury don't know. Yeah, cut that shit out. Yeah, that's what the purpose of you coming there is for, is so that you can corroborate the story that yeah, they already know, but they need you to tell the jury. Because mm -hmm. the, the prosecutor can't tell the the jury right. or they can't go back and use certain statements that was made earlier in a lower court or certain things like that but yeah yeah he got up there man and he did that and um he put her at the scene you know he put her at the scene and um again she got sentenced to a year and a day but yeah everybody that was um charged pled out except little kim right and she probably yeah. would have damn that got probation or three months or 90 i mean I don't see her getting no rack of time. You know, if they gave you that on a, on a trial, I'm sure they would have gave you less on the plea. Yeah, and this all stemmed from a, a beef she had with Foxy Brown. I guess they, these two women could not find enough space where they can both be considered great rappers. Mm -hmm. They had a beef going back and forth, and and Capone from Capone and Noriega, uh, he got into an argument with Lil' Kim's crew outside the radio station, and before you know it... Uh, According to the documents, Damian Butler shot at um, someone in Capone's group, hit a dude, and boom. That's where all of this came from. And I guess uh, Lil C's was there, and a whole bunch of junior mafia people were there. And I'm, I'm going to have to say that Lil C's told. He told, bro. He did tell. He and, told, yeah. And, and let me play this little apology. Um, they had a whole uh, Biggie event in 2019 
where they brought everybody out from from the whole uh, bad boy camp. And I guess this is the first time where Lil C's and Lil yeah, Kim Lil were together. C's. Yeah, yeah. So let me let me play uh let me play this apology, and you could just tell by his apology that he knows that you know he did a little too much. Let me see if I can get this to play here. Oops. Ended up hugging it out. Here we go. And I apologize for things I may have done that may have hurt you or affected you or made you feel bad. I genuinely apologize and I love you from the bottom of my heart. You like one of my, you are my sister. You're not a real sister, but you my sister. For life. And I love you and I thank you for bringing this energy here. Right? Okay, so, I mean, if you listen closely to what he said, he apologized for everything he did, mm-hmm. even if it may have hurt you. Right, no doubt. You know, and he knows that he told on her, and it may have contributed to her getting that year in prison. No doubt, but it also contributed to the downfall of the rest of his career. Because he said in the, in the videos and interviews that he went to Dame Dash, he went to different people to try to get back on, and everybody say, dude, you got to clear your name up, homie. You yeah. know what I mean? So he got the door closed on him because nobody wanted to, Nobody wanted to work with him. And, and and I believe he he believes in the code. And I got proof that he believes in this code, that he violated himself. This is a 2019 interview on a red carpet of the BET Hip Hop Awards. And this brother named Kodak from um, from All Urban Central asked him about the 6ix9ine situation. Listen closely to what uh, Lil C says here at the end of this. Mr. Big Homie Kodak, this is All Urban Central. We got the legendary Lil C. Lil C, what's up? What's up, what's up, baby? What's going on? So, I'm, hey, man, I'm great. I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm talking to you. So we know the queen, Queen B, is being honored tonight. So talk to me about her legacy. You've been there from the beginning. Um, her legacy, man, you know, uh, it's been something special, man. She broke down barriers in hip-hop in the 90s that nobody's ever done before. And it's only right... 20, 25 years later, we get the honor of everything she paved the way for. And the first thing she's doing is bringing her Junior Mafia people out here to show love with her. I got all my other Junior Mafia members out here. Oh, Junior Mafia's in the building! Junior Mafia's in the building. We all here. They represent for Lil' Kim. They honoring the queen. That's the queen of rap right there. So look, y'all, so look, I'm glad I got you guys here because New York, New York has always been relevant in hip-hop since literally the very beginning in the basement in Harlem. So look, with everything that's going on with Takashi right now, him repping New York, him being a, a New York rapper and him also being called a snitch. Is that is that a bad look for him or New York as a whole? That ain't my concern right now. Yeah, not- that, that, that ain't my concern right now. That man got to deal with his own situation, his own thing. But, you know, in hip-hop, nobody don't condone that. So you know how that go. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There you go. You heard it. In hip-hop, nobody condones that. No doubt. So it's, it's a little bit of a mixed message that you're getting there from Lil C's, right? Man, I don't know why <laughs> these people think they didn't tell when they told, man. Now, you know. Yeah. Well, you sure he said, he said, hey, hey, that ain't what I'm about. He, he was trying to duck it, but he had to say something. You know? Thanks for watching this video clip of Streets and Scholars podcast with Alex Alonso and FG. If you want to listen to the entire episode, go to your favorite podcast platform and type in Streets and Scholars. But we're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. And thanks for listening to another episode of Streets and Scholars.